So thank you all for coming. Thank you for being here. We've all come together from all the different communities, the different schools, and our different levels of religiosity to celebrate your bat mitzvahs and to celebrate your journey of serving Hashem. This bat mitzvah program, this roots program, is actually a project under the chief rabbi and the office of the chief rabbi. The chief rabbi was personally involved with the whole process and he has signed every single one of your sederim. Mazel tov. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Rebetzin, Ruthie, so much for making this magnificent morning possible. At the same time, I want to pay tribute to, to Debbie Seif in her absence for the years that she's put in running the, the, this Bat Mitzvah program. The Roots Bat Mitzvah program provides uh, the content and the framework for the Bat Mitzvah programs in our shuls. But ultimately, the, the success of the Bat Mitzvah programs in our shuls is, is directly dependent on the magnificent teachers that we have spread out in our shuls. Who, um, who the girls have paid tribute to this morning and given gifts to. And, uh, and, and just to say thank you so much on, on behalf of all of us. This is a very special but mitzvah ceremony this year in particular because we haven't been able to get together for two years to do this because of COVID. And, and all of you marked your bat mitzvahs during the time of COVID and uh, to, to be able to come together is, uh, is truly a blessing. Girls, you're about to receive a special siddur in honor of your bat mitzvah, which is my personal gift to you. And the reason that I felt it was so important to give you a siddur is because this goes to the heart of what it means to be a Jew and, and what it means to be a Jewish woman. You'll see the siddur that you're about to receive is a special art scroll edition, a woman's siddur. And it's appropriate because, you know, when, when we think about... The, the concept of praying to Hashem. Do you know where the Gemara, where the Talmud learns the role model that we have for davening? The role model that we have for davening is, is a woman, Hannah, who went to go to pray for a child. She couldn't fall pregnant and she desperately wanted to have a child and she went to pray in the Mishkan, in the sanctuary. And uh, when she arrived there to pray, she, um, she was davening and at that time, no one, no one used to daven in a whisper. They used to daven aloud. And she was davening there and she was praying in a whisper. And the, 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 the book of Samuel records that she was praying and her lips were moving, but no one could hear what she was saying. And the, the priest, Eli, at the time came over to her and said, what are you doing? Are you, are you, are you drunk? Why, why are you praying in this way? No one had done that until that time. And, um, and then... She taught us with that, and the sages of the Talmud learned from her that this is the way to daven. When we go to pray the Amida, and you're standing with your legs together and standing in front of Hashem as with, with your siddur open, we pray in a whisper, following exactly what Hannah did. And in what way is it a whisper? That we can, see, we can hear the words, and this is the halacha with davening. When, when you're praying and staying the Amida in front of Hashem, the only person who should be able to hear the words that you are praying is yourself. You need to actually mouth the words, can't just read them in your mind and think them because we need to put our bodies into it and make it a real experience. It's not just an intellectual experience, it's an emotional, spiritual experience. And then we can hear our words, but nobody else can. And so that moment of the Amida, we are actually davening in a whisper. Now, why a whisper? Why, why did our sages say that is the way to pray to Hashem in a whisper? And I think it's because a whisper is intimate. When you talk aloud, and certainly if you're using a microphone, everybody can hear you. There isn't a sense of that same personal connection. If there's someone that you feel really close to, a friend, your parents, someone who's really close to you, and you want to tell them something private that nobody else can hear, then you whisper in their ear. That is an intimate moment. In a whisper, only you and the person that you're whispering to can hear it. And that is when we daven to Hashem, we daven to Hashem in a whisper because at that moment we are so close to Him. And do you know what? The, the, the word that reflects that more than any other word in the Siddur, and you'll see it in the Amida, and it's an amazing thing if you just take a moment to think about it. Do you know when we say in every blessing, Baruch, 
Now that's not the, the radical word. The most radical word in a blessing is Atta. You. Baruch Atta. Blessed are you Hashem. When we say the word Atta, you to Hashem, that means, girls, we're actually talking directly to Hashem. That we have that moment where He is hearing every single word that we are saying and we can talk directly to Him. And that, girls, is something which is profound and it's radical. And I want you to take a moment this morning to consider the enormous privilege of what that is. And let me give you a bit of context to that. Because one of my tasks as Chief Rabbi is to, is to engage on behalf of our community with people in, in positions of influence and power in the country, whether it is government or in the media or other different areas of involvement, and particularly government. And to be able to talk to people in positions of power it takes a process. You have to uh, make an application, you send through a letter, you set up the appointment, and then not, very, not everybody can get that access. It's, it's part of, you know, if, if you're wanting to meet with, uh, with, with the minister of the cabinet, you want to meet with the president, they're not going to meet with, with, uh, with just any citizen. They're going to want to say, well, who are you? What are your credentials? Are we going to set aside the time? And now think about this for a moment. Hashem is greater than any president of any country that has ever lived. As our sages describe him in our prayers, he's the Melech Malchei HaMelachim. He's the king of all kings. And you know what the amazing thing is, girls? When you want to talk to Hashem, who is the master of the universe, who is greater than any living king or queen or ruler or person of position of power in the world, greater than any celebrity in the world, and if you want to talk to Hashem, you don't have to talk to His PA. You don't have to put in an email requesting permission to talk to Him. You don't have to submit your application months in advance. You don't have to wait. Will He meet you? All you need to do is open your mouth. And then Hashem is listening. You take those three steps forward in our mid and you say, Baruch Atah, blessed are you Hashem, directly to Hashem and in a whisper. Because at that moment when you're davening, at that moment there is nobody else except you and Hashem. And for him there is nobody else. He hears your prayers as if you are the only person in the world. That is the greatest gift of all. The greatest gift of all. And that, that is what a siddur represents. When you hold the siddur in your hand, it represents the power to talk to Hashem directly. And the beauty of the Siddur, of course, you can talk to Hashem any time in the day. At any time in the day that you want, that you have a problem, you want to talk to Hashem, you can talk to Hashem and He's ready to listen to you. You don't, you don't, have, to, don't have to send a text message. You, don't, he's, you just open your mouth and He's ready. He's ready to listen. But what we have in the Siddur is those moments of the day when we say the Amidah, when we pray the Amidah, then we are using words we don't even have to think of the words because we have a gift that has been handed down through the generations. The words which are crafted in the Siddur were crafted by prophets who had incredible prophecy and divine inspiration. And they crafted those words, they composed those words so that we've got exactly the right thing to say to Hashem. And of course in the Amidah, right at the end of the Amidah, as we, just before you take your three steps back and you say, and after you say that verse, you can add in any prayer that you want, and you should add in some things which are special to you that you really want from Hashem. But the Siddur gives us the words, and these are the words that generations have, of Jews have said for thousands of years, and you're holding that in your hand, and you're whispering to Hashem, so you have the access, you have the audience with Hashem, and you have the words to say that Jews have said for all of these years. That is a privilege. It's an awesome, awesome privilege. And at that moment, as you're standing in front of Hashem, what does He want? Do, do, Hashem knows what we need. So why do we have to ask Him? Hashem knows what we need. You know, He knows the things that are worrying us, but yet He wants us to talk to Him about it. Because He doesn't need that because He needs the information. He knows exactly, and He loves us. And He wants to give us everything that is good for us. And there are things that He can see that we cannot begin to see. And, and sometimes we go through in life moments of great joy, but also moments of great pain and frustration, moments of suffering. But we know that Hashem is there. Hashem is there and He's loving us and He cares for us. 
And that doesn't mean everything's going to turn out the way that we want, but we know that he's holding us and he's loving us and he wants our prayers, not because he needs to know what to do for us. He knows everything. He wants our prayers because he wants for us to have that connection to him. It's about the relationship. That's what it is. It's about that connection. When, when you go to talk to your parents, it's not about getting what you want. It is about the fact that there are people in this world, your mother and your father, who love you, who care about you and only want what's good for you. Hashem is our loving parent who loves us and wants to be close to us. And when we are davening to Him, we feel that bond. And girls, that bond, as the Gemara says, Avodah the service of the heart, that bond, that love, that connection to Hashem can carry us through the greatest challenges of life and also the greatest celebrations of life. Hashem is there in the times of pain and suffering and He's there in the times of joy and celebration and He's there in all the days in between those to hold us, to carry us, to love us and we do that through the power of prayer. And that's why I felt it was so important on, on this occasion to mark your bat mitzvah, to celebrate together as a community that we do it with the power of prayer. And that's why I felt it was so important to give you a siddur on this occasion. That this siddur should be your companion throughout your whole life. But not the siddur, your connection to Hashem. And as you open the siddur, realize the privilege that you have to say the words, Baruch Atta, blessed are you Hashem, who is listening to every word that I'm saying as I whisper it. Like the, the great woman, the great leader of our people, Hannah whose prayers were answered and Hashem gave her the blessing of giving birth to the man who eventually became the prophet Samuel. And she taught the world, she taught the Jewish world, she taught our sages, what does it mean to pray in a whisper, that bond, that love, that connection. So my blessing to you girls, on, as we mark your bat mitzvah and we thank Hashem that we got to the other side of, of the challenges of this world and we celebrate together as a community, I look forward to presenting each one of you with a personally inscribed Siddur. Take the Siddur with you, carry it with you, but most importantly, carry your relationship and your connection with Hashem with you every day of your life. He is there, He loves you, and He will hold and carry you through everything that lies ahead in the future. And may Hashem bless you girls and your moms and your dads and your families. May He bless our community with his abundant blessings. And we thank him for his love and his blessings and his care. Mazel tov, mazel tov.